The Internet. A place full of wonderful things, horrible things. I loved the Internet. During school, all I would think about was what website I would discover when I got home after school. While I was eating, I would rush to finish my meal so I could get back to surfing the web. When I was asleep, I would dream of the Internet. My entire life revolved around the Internet. My grades were amazing, I had friends, but I was an Internet addict. One day, though, I was scrolling through Facebook when I felt a feeling that I had never felt before while surfing the web, boredom. I was horrified at the thought that now, after years and years of coding and hacking, the Internet was boring. Coding was boring, hacking was boring, social media was boring, everything was boring. I went out the day after this revelation to have coffee with a few of my friends. They knew how obsessed with the internet I was, so they were shocked when I told them that it bored me. A few of them suggested that I was depressed, but one of them told me that I just needed something new. I asked him what he meant, and he explained about the dark web. He told me that it was a place for all illegal activities of all types. Drugs, weapons, killer for hires, and live streams. I asked how to get on it, and he gave me written instructions on a piece of paper. I looked over it and realized it would be quite easy for me since I had experience with hacking and coding. He warned me of hackers that would try to disable my computer, but I figured I wouldn't have any trouble with them since I am a highly advanced hacker myself and my computer was well protected. That night, when I went home, I sat in my computer chair, covered my camera and smiled, excited to revive my love for the internet. I set the paper with instructions beside me, and within a few minutes, I had accessed the dark web. I clicked through, quickly falling into my old routine of surfing the net. I found so many interesting things. A doll maker who made dolls out of real human cadavers. A site for a cult leader named Farmer Charlie. A link that led to a page worshipping various gods and goddesses of death. A site with instructions on how to hire a hitman. A page with various spells and summoning rituals. A place to buy drugs and weapons. It was amazing. But I didn't see any links for what I wanted most, a live stream. Just as I thought that I would never find a live stream, a chat bubble popped up. Hello. I don't recognize your IP address. Are you new? What's your name? I'm set. It read. I hesitated thinking that this is one of those hackers that my friend warned me about, but decided to answer it. My name is. I hesitated, not wanting to give out my real name. My name is Chaos. I am new, thank you for asking. Are you named after the Egyptian god of chaos? My chat partner quickly responded. Yes. I'm impressed, not many people understand the name. Is there anything I can help you find? chaos i went to type no but then stopped i wanted a live stream i needed to fulfill this morbid curiosity that had developed as i surfed the dark web yes can you by any chance find me a live stream set he i had assumed that he was a man sent me a link that i clicked on my screen suddenly went black i panicked thinking that set was actually trying to hack me but then I saw the chat log in the bottom left corner and I relaxed. I read through the comments, reading things like I love your shows and let's get started. I watched as the comments slowed and eventually stopped. I went to type something, but the chat would not work for me. A voice filled my ears. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Today we have quite a treat. Two siblings, one 16-year-old girl and one 12-year-old boy. Admin 1, what would you like us to do? Admin 1 typed, cut out the girl's eyes. I watched in amazement as the man on screen picked up a spoon and a pair of scissors. He walked towards the girl and used the spoon to scoop out one of her chocolate brown eyes. Her screams filled my ears as he cut the optic nerve. Blood poured out of her empty eye socket, making it look as if she was crying blood. He repeated the steps on her other eye. Tears of blood pouring down both of her cheeks. Cut out her tongue, admin one typed. The man smiled and replaced the spoon and scissors with a scalpel. I watched as the man used the scalpel to rip out the girl's tongue. 
The boy sobbed and screamed at the man to stop, begged him and pleaded for mercy, but the man ignored him and continued sawing out the girl's tongue. Her screams were cut short as Adnan one typed. Now slit her throat and move on to the boy. Do the same thing to him. I watched as the boy was tortured then killed, and the live stream was over. The box disappeared, and I smiled at the fact that I had found my entertainment in the internet again. The chat with Set was the only thing on my screen. So? He typed. What did you think, Chaos? I replied, I loved it. Were you there watching, Set? It was amazingly gruesome. I pictured him smiling as I read his next text. I was admin one, Chaos. I'm glad you enjoyed my show. People usually do. I know this is so wrong, but I felt as if I had made a new friend in set. He was a murderer by association, but he was so civil and kind and welcoming with me that he seemed to be my friend. A video chat popped up on my screen. The name said it was set video chatting me. I was shocked to see the face of my friend who had introduced me to the dark web pop up. I knew you would like this, Rose. I figured that one day you would be bored of the normal web. I just had to bide my time and wait. I enjoy adding new friends to my family. Now, you are my daughter, Chaos. It's ironic that you would choose that name, honestly, because you know, I am named after the god of Chaos. Welcome to the family, Chaos. He smiled and added me to a group chat titled Family Chat. There were 10 other people in the group, including Set. Kids, say hello to your new sister, Chaos. Multiple people replied hello, and I typed a hello back. We got to talking, and I realized that they were quite interesting people. Chances are that we will never meet in real life, but we're family now, virtually and realistically. I would die for these people, I really would. As you can expect from the title, this is how my first experience on the dark web went. I'm writing this as a warning to all of you who have interest in going on there. I know this may just encourage more of you on there, but please just know that what I'm telling you has given me nightmares for days now. Just read this and learn from my wisdom. Thinking you can handle what is out there isn't the same as actually handling it. I had always been interested in the dark web. However, I never owned a personal computer growing up, and the college I went to had strict internet monitoring slash filtering, so I never risked making an incursion. Well, I went home due to the coronavirus outbreak and decided it was time to figure out what all the fuss was about. So I did some research and decided to install Tails as a VM and browse from there, hopefully protecting my computer from any malicious attacks. I pull up a Tor browser and hop on the hidden wiki. For the most part, most of the links timed out, most likely they were taken down for one reason or another. Then I found more links to updated Haydn wikis. These must have been updated more recently as several more of the links worked. Nothing crazy. Some deep web corn, honestly the clearnet stuff is better, sites selling drugs, IDs, Bitcoin, etc. The occasional conspiracy site. Red rooms that look like a 10-year-old taking an HTML course made, most likely scams. It was near the bottom of this hidden wiki page that I found an interesting site. I forget the name, but the description said link paste. If you ever find the wiki page, a quick control F will find it for you. It was a pretty simple website. Basically, it was an online forum, actually similar to Reddit. However, it appeared it was primarily used for posting newfound links and offering various services, hacking, drugs, prostitution. Some darker stuff too, linking and selling child corn and pay-to-view webcams of blackmailed teens. I stayed away from those. One of the links caught my eye for some reason. Get revenge on my girlfriend. Normally posts like these link the girlfriend's nudes or whatever, but not this one. The OP gave a ton of her info, saying she cheated. Her driver's license, pictures, email, address. I couldn't read all of it because apparently the girl was Chinese. At first the comments were actually quite wholesome and I laughed, people telling him that she wasn't worth it and he could do way better. Don't worry about her, King, you can do so much better and whatnot. 
Surprisingly wholesome, actually. I guess even on the dark web, we're all still brothers. But as I scrolled down, one of the comments posted a link, captioned got revenge. I, being an idiot, opened it. It redirected me to what looked like a downgraded YouTube video. I clicked play. The video started off in what looked like somebody's unfinished basement. The camera panned around to a hooded woman tied up in a chair, naked. The floor was covered by a tarp. I had a sinking feeling of where this was going. I should have closed the link, deleted the VM, and never looked back. But my curiosity got the better of me. A man walks in from the edge. He's shirtless, revealing a hairy beer gut, but he's wearing what looks like a gimp mask. The footage was kinda grainy so I'm not totally sure. I see he's holding a hacksaw. I should have closed that browser then and there, but I sat, paralyzed by fear of what I knew I was about to see. He took the hood off of the woman, revealing what looked like the woman in the photos above. Her hair was disheveled and her makeup was smeared across her face crying. She looked around frantically, trying to make out her surroundings. The man started with her arm. Still tied to the chair, he began hacking away at her shoulder as she screamed and squirmed. I could hear the sound of the saw tearing at her bone. It makes me sick just to think about. The tarp pooled with blood. I don't really want to describe in any more detail what happened next. Needless to say, the rest of her limbs were removed, and her corpse was strewn across the floor, matted with blood. The camera came in close to her face, as if to verify it was the girl. No longer paralyzed, I immediately closed the browser, horrified by what I had just seen. However, there was a new window open, like one of those pop-up boxes. On it was simply a series of numbers. An IP address. And below it, the text, we know who you are. I quickly opened a terminal and typed an IP protocol configuration, displaying my IP address. It was a match. I stared for a minute in terror. Did they know who I was? Where I am? I sprung into action. I powered off the virtual machine, deleted it from VMware. I then immediately deleted the disk image file it came in and emptied the recycle bin. I restarted my computer. There didn't seem to be any sign of any malware, so I shut it down and went to bed, falling into a restless dream. I haven't really slept since then. I keep seeing what I saw in my nightmares. I'm still scared that somehow they'll find me. I sleep with a gun now. Every noise at night wakes me up in terror. I'm writing this to all of you would be deep web delvers. This isn't going to stop most of you, but at the least I can warn you. Be careful. Try to stay to the safer sites. Don't just click random links. There's some cool stuff out there. But whatever you see is with you forever. I'm probably not ever going back there. There's nothing on there worth what I've been through. I often listen to scary stories on YouTube and always wonder whether they are real or not, but I can assure you, this one is. I am a 16-year-old teen living in the UK and this, well, happened about 30 minutes ago. The idea of the deep web always interested me. I am the type of person that would watch a person snort coke but never do it myself, not because I am scared, I just would rather not wrong myself. About a few months ago, my friend sent a link to what we thought was an Instagram post to our group chat. When I clicked it asked me for some sort of permission, so me being the safer type just locked my phone and got on with the day. About a week passed and I was around my mate's house. I asked him about the link. He smirked and replied, let me show you something, but you can't tell anyone. I joked that he'll take me to his room and touch me, but he just smirked, looked down, and walked towards his room silently, so I followed. He booted up his throwaway laptop and said, what I'm about to show you ranges from mildly to highly illegal, so under any circumstances you cannot link my name to this. Understood? I nodded, sat down on his bed beside him, and proceeded to observe quietly. He said as his computer booted, have you ever been on the dark web? I said I have never been and that I wasn't interested in getting in trouble if that's what it would end up being. He said it was fine and opened a browser, which I would later learn was Tor. 
He asked me if I remembered the link he sent me, and it behaved just a little bit differently than what one should expect. Proceed, I said gently in a monotone voice, pretending not to be worried and carried on looking at the screen. He typed something up into the browser and opened a website to which he entered some sort of code. The website spat out a few sets of numbers and full stops ordered in Ross. He said, the link I sent out was an IP grabbing link. It obtains the IP address of the device that the link was opened on. He pointed out that the amount of rows roughly equaled the number of people in our group chat. He continued, these are the IP addresses of you guys' devices, now look. He copied one of the rows, opened another tab on which he pasted the number, and hit search. A screen appeared, revealing a bunch of information about the device. It read, iPhone 8, iOS, as well as the network provider, but also more worrying information. It showed if their screen was on and the orientation of their device. The one that creeped me out the most was the location which pointed at our hometown we lived in. At this point, I was really worried, and with a raised voice I exclaimed, What the hell, dude? Why did you want this information? Despite my emotion, my friend grabbed my arm and put his hand on my mouth telling me to shut up as his mom was downstairs. He replied, Bro, if she finds out, we're both dead. So, I closed my eyes for a second, took a few deep breaths, and calmly said explain. He kept going, thanks to the encryption I use, these IP addresses are safe and only I can access them. This is a little experiment I've been running to see if this thing works and I need to know how reliable this is. At this point my friend could clearly see I was in a bit of shock, so he offered to show me the more entertaining cliché side of the dark web. We went through various websites selling cars, countless types of drugs I haven't even heard of before, which made the previously mentioned coke snorting seem lame. On a popular selling website called Silk Road, he showed me cocaine bricks the size of mini fridges and cartons of weed the size of armchairs. It all seemed very interesting and exciting to the point that in my free time I couldn't stop thinking about it. So now, I just got a throwaway device and after talking to my friend, I've installed some of the software required to browse the dark web and started surfing. A few pages of Silk Road and stuff I decided I was done. So, I closed it all up, disabled VPNs, and forgot about it. I didn't go through any red rooms or CP websites. I tried staying safe. I thought I was. So I'm watching PC videos when I get an email from an address and domain I don't recognize. The email was titled with a bunch of numbers with seemingly no meaning to them. It was out of place so I began feeling uneasy as I remembered my recent ventures and what I found inside terrified me. This email said, victim information and proceeded to list all, and I mean all banking information as well as other stuff like my address and my mother's surname. At this point, I'm crapping bricks and speed dealing with my bank, fearing for my savings. This is an automated service, the robot-like voice said. I've heard it countless times and knew that if I spoke, it would automatically skip the message and proceed to listen as calmly as I could. While feeling like I'm going to throw up, I said, I would like to report a case of bank information fraud and would like to speak to an assistant. Thankfully, I was on the phone to a real person within a minute. Kind old lady seemed very concerned. With my permission, quickly froze my card and account as the account was also in jeopardy. When we ended the call, I felt so relieved and happy to know my funds were finally safe. I collapsed onto my bed in exhaustion. Now technically I'm all good, but the question remains, if the person wanted to sell my CVV info, why did they go out of their way to find my email? Trust me guys, no matter how bored you get, never go onto the dark web. You're never safe there.